exclusive. I, I grew up like a savage. One, two, one, two. You now rocking with the No Vultures podcast. You got me, myself, Lord Rab. You got OG Clee going on a vacation. Free OG Clee. You got Corner Barber on a vacation. He been on a lot of vacations lately, nigga. You having money, nigga. You, you gone yeah. in the pandemic, nigga. You having money right now, nigga. going on trips. Man, you feel me? Um, and today we got a very, very, very special guest. Now, this dude, if you don't, if you don't know who this dude is, and you involved in the hip hop culture, this ain't no coastal thing. This ain't no local thing. This is a, this is a, 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 a legend. You know what I mean? This is this person has uh, been responsible for uh, some of the most iconic hip hop slang and language that has ever surfaced that, that anybody has ever heard. If you ever heard somebody say, "Yada," I mean, that's his word. If you ever heard somebody say "hyphy," that's his word. You know what I'm saying? If you ever heard the phrase "floormatical," that's his phrase. That's his term. If you ever heard of dual committee. If you ever heard of three times crazy, if you ever heard tell me when to go, if you ever heard muscle cars, then you know who I'm talking about, man. We got Keith the Sneak in this motherfucker today at No man, Vultures. Man, yada da, yada da, man. Shout out to No Vultures, man, for having me. You know what I'm talking about? Man. Uh, man, I'm glad, to, I'm glad to be here. You know what I'm talking about? No I'm, doubt. I'm definitely uh, glad at all my accomplishments. Talking about for sure. Till, till this far, you know what I mean? Still doing shit. You know what I mean? Uh, just dropped a new album called Gorilla. You know what I mean? Um, it's on all platforms. You know what I mean? It's dope. It's in its own lane. You can't compare it to no other albums. You can't say I'm um, compare this to this and compare this to that. It's um, it's yeah, un- so it's uncomparable. It's uncomparable. Uncomparable. That that's big, man. And you know, the hip hop community for sure trust you and trust your judgment. You know what I'm saying? We gotta go. We've been following Keith forever. You know what I'm saying? The whole West Coast, the whole. You know what I'm saying? Especially yeah. Oakland. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people claim this is something that you never claimed. You know what I'm saying? You never said you was the king of Oakland. No, I haven't. You never said you never said you was the best rapper in Oakland. You never said you was the richest rapper in Oakland, but you came to know Vultures today, so we're going to give you all the flowers we're going to give you, and that's what we're going to do. We ain't worried about how nobody else feel about it. Right, you right, feel me? Right. That's how we rock. Yeah, yeah, um, I appreciate that. Too. Somebody close that door for me. Um, so, Keith, you know, um, I'm going to give you the No Vultures disclaimer, although I know you already know. Uh, you know, we, we created this podcast because, you know, no disrespect to nobody else, but a lot of people have platforms, uh-huh. and sometimes maybe they misinform. Right. Sometimes maybe they just want to make money off the culture. Right. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe they don't have no concern, or no real concern about Keek the Sneak health right. after he gets shot. Maybe they right. just want the news to be able to report Keek the Sneak got shot. Right. And then right. maybe I can make a couple dollars, and right. you know what right. I'm saying? Right. It ain't really the true concern, the yeah. genuine love. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Now. um, so we ain't, you know, a lot of people that came here, they talked about their beefs, they talked about shit, but but when they leave here, the difference between us and them other platforms is that shit seems stupid right. when they leave here. It's like, damn, what was we, it ain't nobody going, it ain't going to have no uprise in the funk exactly. after they leave here, you exactly. see what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, but we like to go from the beginning, right? From the uh-huh. very beginning. So, keep the sneak. Kunta Kente. Kunta. Born in Alabama. Yeah. And I know this, but a lot of the fans and a lot of people don't know this. Tell the people how you got to Oakland. Oh, I, uh, my pops kidnapped me. Mm. Yeah, he took me. My mom and them, my mom and my sister didn't want to leave. Mm. So he was like, yeah, man, too dumb. Mm. So he grabbed me, a diaper bag, and we drove to California. Damn. And we ended up in West Oakland. Now, did he have people here? What made him go to the West? Uh, Pops, he had people here, but he had been here before. Okay. You know what I mean? Pops was uh, Pops was selling hair around. Pops, was, mm. my, my daddy from West Oak, mm. from the Lower Bottoms. You mm. know what I mean? Uh, uh, I used to be in Campbell Village. I got pictures of me when I was like six or seven. Damn. He used to make me. I used to sit in the car while he grind. While he used to grind. You know what I mean? 
And sit there. And I'd go in the store. Nigga didn't have no nigga didn't have no phone to play with. <laughs> no, no, no Game Boy. <laughs> no nothing yet. <laughs> nigga, you just sit in the car and watch. Yeah, and I used to just sit in the car and just chill. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. So so now did your did your mom and sister eventually come? Eventually he sent he sent for them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and when they got so your sister older. Yeah, I got an older sister. And how much older is she? I got, uh, two years. But um, I got three sisters. Okay, right. but the sister that that was there is two yeah, years older than two you. Years older. Yeah, so she she saw a little bit more, but not that much more. Not much. Yeah. More, you mm-hmm. know what I'm about? Mm-hmm. But uh, when you was pulling up, somebody said, "That's Ray Bowman, brother." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's my brother. Yeah, too. yeah. That's what they they were saying. So uh, so growing up, starting in the West, like uh, was y'all in like. The projects or like uh, any of the, the old Victorians or what? How y'all? Yeah, we was on. Uh, we was living in the car. For Lim- a minute. Oh, okay. You know I mean? It was so, real. Yeah, it was real. So pops we got it together. You know okay. I mean? Then we moved in the uh, in the jets over there. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I can't really tell you what jets we was in, but we was in some jets. You know what I mean? Okay. The last thing I remember, then we moved to the dubs. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? So that is that where you started like your elementary shit, like in the dubs? Yeah. And uh we then eventually we moved to High Street. And that's when I started my uh you know, my elementary my So High Street is when I met you, right? Because I lived on Peniman and you lived on Brookdale. I lived on Allendale. Allendale. Across from Brandon. Right there, my nigga. Right. And um uh, but you know, I used to pay attention because we was all kids back then and we was in the sports, right? Yeah, so certain niggas walk through with their uniform on. Right. You played for the Dynamites too, didn't you? Dynamite. I remember you catching a bus, you know, going to Dynamite practice or whatever, or a nigga walking to King's Coffee Shop right. or, or, or going to Allendale to shoot hoop. Yeah. And uh, Maxwell. Going to Maxwell to shoot hoop. Maxwell had the dunk courts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but, but back then, what was your life like? Like, what did you? What was your influences then? Like, far as the the game, seeing dope boys, or see, or or being influenced by that, but also relating that to the culture, to just like music and hip hop shit. Like, how did how did you relate that shit to your life? Because around them times, we experiment. We like we hearing short, and then like N.W.A. and then like DJ Quick. So like while we growing up. West Coast was powerful, but like right before that, we was the EPMDs, all that, right. right? But then the West Coast was real powerful. Yeah. So, like, what was your, uh, what was what was your life like then? Like, how did you see it? Uh, I was all around it. You know what I'm talking about? It was all around me. I'm right. About selling coke, smoking coke. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers getting strung out. Motherfuckers OD. You know what I mean? I was around that shit. You know what I mean? Pops had a like damn near dope house, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just in and out of that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. I used to he used to run me out of here. I'd come downstairs and see hella balloons. Right. Motherfuckers is bagging up balloons and shit. I don't know what it is at that time, you know, right. because I was so young. He used to run me out of it. Yeah. Know? I mean, I used to make me stay in my room until they was done and yeah. finished with whatever they was doing. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? I come back now and shit'll be clean and spotless. Like, yeah. Like nothing was never there. You, so, is, is it crazy for you when you look at today's, when you look at nowadays and you be like, you know, a motherfucker would be like, my dad would, wasn't doing the right thing, but he was because he was doing what he knew how to do. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's that's kind of the stigma they put on black yeah, folks. Like, oh man, they just, wow. They was running, he ran off and took his son yeah. to a heroin spot, yeah. but he was really wanting the best for you. Nah, he kept me away from dope. And right, all that shit. right. Dope. Yeah, that's what yeah. made me say that because he yeah. running you off. Nah. Get get from my body here. Hell no, he yeah, like, Give me I'm gonna teach you how to do it. Right, he right. Running me off because uh, I got seven brothers, so all of them been through all through the systems, and you know what I mean. Uh, then nobody do nothing like with the last name. You know right, I mean? right, right. So I was his last hope for uh, somebody succeeding or somebody doing something yeah. with our last name. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You did you like so? Well, I know this, but what was your first rap you ever wrote? Uh, I can't. I, I really can't tell you. 
I, I really can't remember my very first rap. I didn't been through so many raps, but I remember uh, me. I used to freestyle. Yeah. A lot. yeah. That's how I came up with my style and shit. So you you I, met a you met age and uh what what grade? It's the seventh grade. The seventh grade. So, but prior to that, you had the Gatorade rap. Gatorade at halftime. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I forgot about that. I yeah. used to. I used to make rap but, but was you, you football team. But you, know you wasn't even tripping off being a rapper. Tripping. That was really nah. to get y'all hype. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, Gatorade at halftime. Do, do that yeah. fuck you up? Do that fuck it you do. up when you watch the kids now, like especially the college and high school, right. how they kind of do that shit? Like right. a nigga really ain't a rapper, but he's right. saying these words to right. hype his team up. Right, it'd be that one person who would get up yeah. and have everybody hype. Yeah. And I'm talking about hitting their pads. Right, you know, right, right. Beat, right, you know right. What I mean? And I'm like, get right at halftime. Yeah, yeah. And they joke. Yeah. You know? That's crazy you brought that up. But yeah, but it's yeah. funny that we talk about that because I knew about that then because okay. other kids was talking about it. Right. Like, this nigga be having us, you know, because the yeah. Dynamites was the but shit. Shot. So let's just keep it real. Yeah. All the Crusader yeah. niggas, yeah. all the Saint niggas, let's just keep it real. The it. Dynamites was the shit, man. For real. You know Nobody what I'm saying? Like, if they had reality shows back then, that would have been the coldest reality show, yeah. nigga. Straight yeah. baby men on the field. You know what I'm saying? For real. Uh, oh, I just found this out too. If y'all, I just you know we talking about this, but they don't do weight no more. They don't. They don't weigh in. Fuck me up. I said, it's ain't age. no way they it's would just, let them big ass just, niggas. It's just age. It's just age. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. And you know all the shit we used to have to go uh, through to make weight. I was so skinny when I did play. I had to play older, lighter. Wow. I was thin. And then look, I was so young, but I weighed so much. I had to play. I was supposed to be playing Pee Wee's or Junior Pee Wee's. Yeah. I'm playing Junior Midgets because I weigh 120. But Damn. I'm 10, I'm 10 years old. Damn. Playing with niggas that's 12 or 13. Back when niggas wasn't <laughs> safe tackling. Everybody but was a so, missile. Oh Everybody God. was a missile Dang. back then. <laughs> Everybody wanted to go tackle practice with you. I'm going to go tackle with you. Go tackle with you. <laughs> and nigga ripping. Ripping nigga, man. For real. These kids don't know, man. This shit ain't the same, bro. Nah, but it's, it's nothing the same. So, so by the time you got to um, seventh grade and you met Age, uh -huh. you did was it a kind of thing like you met him and he met you and y'all you just like I be rapping or how did uh -huh. it go? I met him and he had actually been in the studio before. Mm. I had never been in the that studio. That was big back then. Yes. Studio cost a lot exactly. of money back it was then. Twenty or thirty hours, mm -hmm. and he was going to a studio, so. Me, I got two tape players. So I got one playing the beat, mm -hmm. one playing record, and I'm rapping. Mm -hmm. And I got to rap the whole three minutes. Right. Because I can't, can't stop, stop it. Yeah, head. yeah, yeah. So that's how I'm coming with my uh, tape. Right, you know, right, you know, right, walk, right. Asian Man had been in a studio before. You know what I mean? He actually had a song called Oakland Public Schools Can't Fade Us. Oh. Right. And uh, it was sick. He had the boom, 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 boom. Right. Oh, okay. He yeah, had that. Yeah. Yeah. No, we public schools can't fade. Oh. Like, it, oh. And then he was going so sick, and he was just talking about, you know, what was going on in the school. Right. Right. And I'm like, man, this man is dope with explaining. You know, what I'm talking about what what you can see. What's going on? What's yeah. What's going on? Yeah. So my mission was like, damn, I want to hook up with him. I want him to at least. Put me in, in a position where I can be in the studio, where I can rap in the studio. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. He was rapping with a dude named Blueford. Blueford was dope as fuck. Okay. But Blueford couldn't rap on beat. Mm. He could never say his rap on beat. Mm. He sounds so dope. I could tell him he's spitting bar for bar. But when he got in the lab with the headphones on, he couldn't do it on beat. Right. You know what I'm yeah, yeah. And, uh, at the same time, me and Asian Man, we used to rap against each other okay. every day. It was kind of like a competition thing. Yeah. Me, I'm always freestyling. I might write a few bars, but I go. I just go right. with the head. And, right. You know what I mean? And, and, and it used to work for me. Yeah. I used to be able to freestyle. So, you know what I mean? And <laughs> had a whole crowd. In Going crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, I was rapping with another cat named Ali. And, uh, Asian man wanted me to fuck with him. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. Yeah. 
He was like, uh, now how long between that time period you talking when you was rapping with Ali and when you and Age became a group because y'all was two raw brothers. Right. It was two raw brothers. This was this was ninety one. This was nineteen ninety and ninety one. Mm. So ninety two. So that's really yeah, seventh grade, yeah. 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 So nineteen ninety two, me and Age decided to give it a shot. Okay. Okay. Yeah. As two raw brothers or as dual committee? As two raw brothers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The first song, the first song we did it was, was "Hit the Gas." Fuck no! Mm-hmm. I'm not getting off. Yeah. Swear to God. Yeah. It was to a whole nother beat. This dude named Little Man in Berkeley had a studio in his room, and he did "Hit the Gas." Now, now, now. Okay, I'm going to go back a little bit. Now, Orange Man was a rapper. Yeah. Orange Man was like one of the first niggas I seen really take this shit serious, like from my age. Uh-huh. Like, or he might be a year or two older than me. Uh-huh. But this nigga, and I, I didn't know where he got his name, but the nigga used to wear the Syracuse fits. Right. Remember, orange we used man, to get the team to, shit from East Mountain Mall? He used to wear orange. He used to wear the orange. Like, that nigga. That's why he was orange. He really was a genius marketer back then without even knowing it. Like, this nigga used to wear orange every day. He used to wear either Hurricane shit or Syracuse yeah, shit. Orange Vans. All this shit. It was orange Man. Orange Man. And, um... That's my brother. That's my guy. And so... So... But, but, but... So, back then, you never tried nothing with him? No. Nah, me and Orange Man never did no... We Y'all was just people. folks? We was just folks. Okay. So, okay. But, but... but Orange Man was rapping. He was rapping. He, he was rapping. He used to mess with this dude named Murph, so he used to be in the studio with Murph. Yeah. He you know was I mean? he was serious about that yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, he was in a group at one time. Yeah. And then he went solo. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Yeah. So, did you... Uh, now, now when y'all y'all did hit the gas to the other beat, you said right. a, it was a whole a, another beat. So somebody and named Lil Man. Lil Man made the beat. Okay. And it was a slapper. Okay. And it was much slower. Okay. It was like boom, 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 boom. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was a much slower beat. Okay. And me and Adrian had two verses a piece. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. He like, hit the gas, cause I done robbed these niggas, now they dead and gone. I know the bubble looking for that nigga named Ramon. Mm. So I'm gonna be creeping, cause I got these niggas six feet deep in. I'm ready to fly. I think I'm I remember that one. I think I remember that one. You remember that? I think I remember that yeah. one. Now that you saying the verse, I, I think I remember that one. <laughs> Damn. So, so hit that G-A-S and G-O. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. We sure. ended up, we ended up hooking back up with Mons folks who had the eight track studio in West Oakland. This dude named Cyrus. Okay. So we did a song called "Funk That" and "Rap Maniac." Okay. We had Mon Cousins back as our producer. Now, "Rap Maniac" got three times crazy in the hook. React, "Rap Maniac." That's how we came up with the name three times crazy. But y'all recorded Rap Maniac as dual committee. As dual committee. But said three times crazy in her. Yeah, so Bart yeah. is not even here yet. Bart ain't even here yet. That's crazy. That's, that's you would crazy. think that Bart came and right. they became. Okay, so now, as y'all dual committee, when when did that song turn into Hit the Gas as we all know it as the classic? Um, when we hooked up with Dollars and Spence. Cause see when 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 we put Bart in the group, Bart had an assignment to do. Mm. He had 30, 40 songs. Ooh. Write a verse to all, all of these songs. Damn. Write a verse to all of these. Damn. And then as we doing them, he always got a right. Well, but we damn that is crazy. Yeah. So y'all y'all we had all this heat, and we had we and we wanted to rap it. So as soon as we got the chance to rap it. We had Tom the Pump, and he making bumps, and we spitting out all that shit. Right. Yeah. What you say? I said, but before the part with the dual committee, we still told us how y'all hooked up with Sebo. We hooked up with Sebo. Yeah, see, I was about to go there. We, hooked, we did the hip hop on the green. With Marvelous. 
with Marcus. I was there. That's when she came out with Ghetto Blues. I was there. AWOL was there. Yeah. We rip, we and we did Rap Maniac. Okay. Okay. Vibes. Okay. Okay. And Funk. Okay. When we finished rapping that day, everybody was giving us cards. Mm. We had rapped the whole shit. And mm. we, hadn't had, we hadn't even been out yet. For you youngsters, hip hop on the green, Gavin Convention, all of those would be like what y'all go to, like Complex Con or oh, yeah, uh, South, by South, South by Southwest. Southwest, but it was in the Bay Area. Like, this was the home of it. So we had a major hip hop scene here. Yeah. Yeah. And we met up with Barbara, with um, T. Freddie Smith's mom, mm. before we left. And she gave us a card, but she said, we want to sign y'all. Y'all, y'all not don't don't even take no more cards. We we want to sign y'all. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Y'all is so talented. Y'all is the dope. Y'all is raw. Y'all is the, yeah. Y'all was the best out there today. Mm. She said that with emphasis. And he had he and y'all y'all knowing that they popping at the time. For sure, they got Sebo, they got Marvelous, they got Pizzo, the Mississippi. Um, they had a few people. They shit was yanking. Yeah. They shit was yanking. So, so when y'all got with a wall, how how did that work? First of all, like you and Age walking to where, or do they pick y'all up? How does this go? We drove the sack. Okay. Y'all drove the sack. Uh-huh. Just y'all two. Just me and Jim. Okay. We met up at their little office. Okay. Mm-hmm. And y'all 14 and 15 years old. 14 and 15 years old. So let, let's just put this in perspective. We had permits. You know what I'm saying? These young niggas got permits going to Sacramento. Yeah, y'all cool. don't got a navigation. Mm-hmm. Y'all not from Sacramento. Nah. Y'all got to find cousins. this office. Got you got cousins. Yeah, but they all blood. So okay. They all At all. Okay. You know, they got their own war out there. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, I'm pretty sure we made it. You know what I mean? They greeted us. We went to Barbara's house. You know what I mean? Uh, she, uh, you know, we talked about the advance. We talked about this, that, and the other. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, Did y'all know anything about the music business? We didn't know nothing. You know what I'm talking about? To tell you the truth. Mm. We did. All we knew was we need to be out. Somebody need to hear this shit we got going on. You know right. what I'm talking about? For real. Somebody need to hear it. And and, and and let's 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 be clear. It ain't SoundCloud days. There's not a ton of fourteen and fifteen year old niggas doing music. We talking about crisscross. We talking about uh too low, the funky little nigga, rap a lot. We talking we ain't even got to Bow Wow or none of them niggas yet. Them niggas ain't out. It ain't no young nigga. The youngsters, remember the youngsters back in the day? Y'all remember that? They beat up a yeah. So but y'all niggas don't even seem this young when y'all dropping music. First of all, y'all didn't highlight how young y'all was. Right. Y'all was just making music. We was music. making music, bro, but we was four, I was 14, mom was 15. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. And so when y'all got there and y'all started talking about advances and shit, they're talking about thousands of dollars. Yeah. Well, actually, they talking about uh, like 500 and shit like that. You know what I'm talking about? To get you, know, you to be able exactly. to, so y'all niggas they, won't they, go they, sell no rocks. Nah, they thing was like, well, y'all wrong, y'all dope, but haven't nobody heard y'all yet. Mm. They don't, don't nobody know y'all yet. Mm. Y'all, y'all, you know, y'all got to crawl before y'all walk. Y'all got right. to, people got, you know what I mean? Y'all got to do this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. And we like, nah, I think uh, we should be getting paid. Right. So we get, they put us in the studio with uh, Sebo. Okay. The autopsy. He was working on the autopsy. Okay. And that's when we did something in my steel toes. Hey, Man, listen, to this day, and shout out to Marvelous. She coming tomorrow. To this day. Shout out Marvelous. Um, that's one of Sebo hardest joints ever. Like, just period. Like, one of my favorite for show. And that's back when niggas didn't even have Timberlands. Niggas was going to pay less by a honcho. For sure. Honchos with the steel toe in them. Motherfucker hurt yeah. the shit out your feet. That was Mike Mosley and Sam Boston. <laughs> yeah. So early on, you was getting exposed to some slap. Yeah, I was. I was getting introduced to real producers. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And you and y'all, y'all, y'all recording in sack? Who was recording in uh, Fairfield? So oh, at Mike Mosley Studio. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Something in the steel toe. And uh, 
I jumped on another song, but it never came out. You know what I mean? Uh, after that, <clears throat> we we on T because we like uh, what's going on with the advance. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's let's can we get the advance? Let's sign. Let's get the advance, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, and and you know the end of the result was he didn't want to give us an advance. We ended up getting to getting into it with him. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. And we was on Walnut and he was in the town. You know what I mean? Rest in peace. We was with Rain. You know what I'm talking Rest about? Rest in peace to Rain. Yeah. And uh, you see him at a gas station. You know what I'm talking about? And he was trying to act like he was with that rah rah shit. To rain, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 You know, it happened like that. Yeah. yeah. But prior to that, yeah. like now let's put this in perspective too. Cause this is like some shit off a movie. Like y'all young, right? We 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 are fourteen, wasn't exactly. these niggas fourteen. Nah. Right. These niggas is grown. We 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 fucking with grown niggas. Right, right. And yeah. so and so he comes and uh he says well, after y'all wanted y'all money, you still going to Fremont. Yeah. He, he comes up, up to Fremont. He came up to Fremont and wanted to fight me, too. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, me and Orange Man is going to jump. That's wild. Yeah. That's, these is grown men. Yeah, these is grown Knowing men. Knowing they legally can't school. have y'all in this contract. We in school. You know what I'm talking about? We still going to school. But our thing was, we don't give a fuck. Well, we signed. We not fucking with you no more. And did y'all talk to Sebo? Because he was there. Yeah. Did y'all talk to him separate? And one time, Sebo was in a car with the nigga he wanted to fight. So it was just like, okay. You know what I mean? I respect it. I'm like, okay, Sebo, you know. Yeah. With this nigga. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Sebo just met me. Sebo mm -hmm. been knowing him. Mm -hmm. They from SAC. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Lord, like, 29, whatever. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> The same time that nigga 